All right. In this episode, we are going to talk about skills. Uh, I'm going to touch on a few different things here. We're going to talk about how you get them in C-Gen, uh, character generation, how you raise them with experience points, both during character generation and after, how you form a dice pool with them, which we touched on in previous videos, but we'll go over again, uh, and an overview of what you can do with um, advantages and... Um, what do you call them? Failures. Not failures, but uh, despairs. Alright, so as we're looking here, uh, one of the first things you're going to do in character generation is choose a class. So let's say you chose the, the consular class. Uh, that class does a num by choosing your class, it does a number of things. It determines what three specialties you'll have access to. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it gives you a number of uh, class skills right away. So just by choosing the Consular, before you even get a specialization, you gain the following class skills. Cool, Discipline, Knowledge Education, Knowledge Lore, Leadership, and Negotiation. All of these count as class skills for your character. Uh, in addition, you choose three of those skills and uh, put one rank into them. Now, it's important to, to note, it's one rank in three skills. It's not three ranks to divide up among your skills, so you couldn't have two, one at two and one at one. You have to have three separate skills that you put one rank in. Now, you might have gotten one of these skills from a race or from a species that you chose earlier in character generation so you might be able to bump a skill if you got a rank that way to two um, but you have to choose one of these six skills cool discipline knowledge education knowledge or leadership and negotiation and put one skill rank into each of them now those of you familiar with other versions of the star wars role-playing game of fantasy flight games we'll notice that you get one less skill rank to divide here, uh, to, to, to gain here. Uh, in other games, you get, uh, you choose four skills and put one rank into each of them. Well, that's all set here because all characters in Force and Destiny begin with a force rating of one, which I believe is the equivalent to 20 experience. Um, so it's really quite a deal. Anyway. Um, so yes, so the first thing you do, choose your class, that class gives you six class skills, you're going to take three of those and put one rank into them. Next, you're going to choose a specialization. Now your specialization is going to give you some additional class skills, uh, as well as giving you your talent trees. So say you chose the healer class for your uh, consular. You gain discipline, knowledge education, knowledge xenology, and medicine. Now, some of these you've already you already had. You already had discipline and knowledge education. Um, that doesn't mean it's like a double class skill or anything. It just means that you get another chance to put one skill point into it. Uh, after you choose your specialization, you mark whatever new class skills, and then you choose two of those skills and put one rank into them. So this gives you an opportunity barring anything from species, to start with discipline and knowledge education at rank two. You would put one rank into them when you chose the concert class, and then one rank into them when you chose the healer specialization. Now you'll want to think a little bit when, design, when designing your character. If there are any skills that you want at rank two, it is much more efficient to choose a specialization and a class that double up on those, that give you those two opportunities to put one skill rank into them. Because it is cheaper to buy a skill rank at level one with experience than it is to increase a skill from rank one to level two later. So if you knew you wanted your discipline at level two, the consular and healer specialization are an excellent combo. Because again, Consular gives you those three skills that you can put one rank in. You choose one of those to be discipline. And then you get a second opportunity 
to put one skill rank into discipline by taking the healer specialization. So that would let you start without inputting any experience at level two. And keep in mind, two is a cap for all char new characters in character generation. That's as high as you can go, no matter what. So that's how you gain skills in character generation. Now, say you want to uh, increase a skill with experience, or buy a skill with experience, either during character generation, because all characters start with 100 to 110 or 20 or 30, depending on how you do motivations, character points. Um, skills cost five time, times the purchase rank and experience, and each rank must be purchased sequentially. So that means to gain a skill at rank one, it's five experience, five times one. To increase a skill from rank one to rank two costs 10 experience. Two times five equals 10. So if you want to go... Um, say this wasn't a, a first level character, say, say or a starting level character. Say this was in the middle of a campaign, you wanted to raise a skill from 1 to 3, it would cost you 5 for the first level, 10 for the second level, and 15 for the third level, so you're looking at 30 experience points. Uh, now that would be very rare, I don't know many game masters that would allow you to go from 0 to 3 in one gaming session without a radically impressive uh, reason. Uh, but that's just an example of, of that you have to buy one rank at a time as you level up. Now that's for class skills. So class skills cost five times the purchased rank, must be bought sequentially. If you buy a non-class skill, um, there is a uh, out-of-class penalty of five experience you have to pay. So say you wanted to buy a level one skill that was not in your in your class say uh, you wanted a uh, lightsaber but you hadn't taken the neiman disciple specialty yet and you wanted a rank in lightsaber uh, it would cost you five five you know rank one times five plus five so it would cost you 10 points to get it at level one now this is something else you really want to think about before you start dumping points into out of class skills are you ever going to want this discipline if you are save the experience and buy the specialty. Uh, if you're ever going to want this specialty, don't buy ranks and out-of-class skills before you get the specialty. It, it's way too expensive. Just wait, save up your experience, buy the specialty, and it could be any specialty. I mean, you could, even, even though you're a consular, you could buy the Starfighter A specialty. Um, there's a penalty for it, but we'll talk about that uh, in, another, in another video. Right now we're just talking about skills. So that's how you, you increase skills with experience. Again, the rank you want to buy times five, and if it's out of class, you pay an additional five experience. And every rank must be bought sequentially. So you cannot go from rank two to rank four. You must go rank two to rank three, then rank three to rank four. All right, now, uh, skill ranks combine with your attributes uh, or abilities, I forget what they call them in this game, to form dice pools. And that can be one of the more confusing aspects of the game because it's not like anything you've done before. Characteristics, they call them. Um, so say you needed to make a discipline check. Say you'd put your two ranks in the discipline and discipline is based off of will, uh, willpower. So say you have a rank four willpower. To generate a dice pool, you take the larger of the two numbers. Uh, you decide what you're doing. In this case, we've decided it's discipline. So discipline combines the discipline skill and the willpower characteristic. You're using those two, discipline and willpower. Uh, you're gonna have two numbers. In this case, we have a four and a two. You take the larger of those two numbers and take that many green dice. So you're going to start with four green dice. And now you're going to replace a number of those dice equal to the lower number with yellow dice. So in this case, where the lower number is two, we replace two green dice with two yellow dice, or upgrade two green dice to two yellow dice. So our dice pool is two yellow dice and two green dice, 
before adding any difficulty or penalty dice. Um, and that's it. That's how you generate a dice pool. Uh, pretty simple. You determine what skill. The skill is going to tell you what characteristic to look at. Between those, you take the higher number. You start with that many green dice, and you upgrade a number equal to the lower of the two numbers to yellow dice. Now, we're going to look at um, a little guide here, because you get um, what you call them, despairs and um, benefits there, advantages. You get advantages and threat. Advantages and threats, not just, despairs are the major ones, are the major uh, penalties. Uh, so, just like in combat, you know, we we touched briefly in another video where if you get these little uh, advantage symbols or these little threat symbols, you can do and initiate criticals or take extra strain or what have you. Well, just like any dice pool, um, any dice roll, skills can can benefit from these. Now they do astrogation on a different part here. Um, hyperspace calculations, which is which are astrogations. So uh, if you if success, better eggs at point less time calculating, the more successes you get. Uh, if you get an advantage, it could potentially reduce the travel time. If you get a triumph, uh, you get the minimum calculation time um, or greatly reduce travel time. Uh, threats decrease accuracy slash increase travel time, so you could be st further away from your goal, or it takes you longer to get to your goal, which I guess ultimately result in the same thing. And despair, same as threat or disastrous occurrence. So your hyperdrive blows out or something. So all those would be based off of an astrogation roll. And now if we look down here, they give a number of options for all the skills. For knowledge skills, um, successes, determine how much of the knowledge you gain and the speed at which you get it. Uh, advantages might impart particularly useful pieces of information. Um, and triumphs could give you an extremely useful piece of information. And the other two do the opposite. Threats, you know, you start losing bits of information. And a despair, uh, you get misinformation or outright falsehoods that you think are true. And sometimes in with this, it might actually uh, behoove the, the game master. Make that role in private so that the player doesn't know. That can add a level of suspense. Uh, I know I'm a big fan of letting the players always do their roles, but if it's going to enhance the suspense uh, of a role play session, I'm all for doing a role or two in secret. Um, athletics. Uh for advantages, plus one movement-based maneuver. Um, for two advantages. Or plus one blue dice on another physical check. Plus one strain if you suffer for a threat. Suffer two threat, fall prone. Three threat, uh, suffer a wound. Ooh, suffer a despair. Critical injury on an athletics check. That could be rough. <clears throat> Let's see. What are the things that might be used off in stealth? Um, for an advantage, reduce the time required to move somewhere, so you're moving pretty swiftly. A triumph would let you identify a method of distracting an opponent for an entire scene. Um, despair would increase the time required to do something by 25%. And the despair evidence left behind. So you wouldn't get caught for using a despair. You, if you succeed at the roll, but roll the despair, you make it, uh, but you left evidence behind. They're going to know it was you a little later. So that's kind of cool. Um, negotiation, triumph, gain a perk, concession from target, uh, a triumph, NPC becomes a regular client slash vendor, threat, increase the cost, or increase the value, or shorten contract or something, and despair, agreement contains serious loopholes. Um, so there's all kinds of just little things, and again, this little guide here helps quite a bit. Um, got it from here, the Alexandrian.net. This guy put together a really nice uh, guide. Cheat sheet. 
and I guess that that's really it for skills. There's not a whole lot more to talk about. It's going to form the crux of the game. These are going to be the roles you make the most often, um, whether they be combat or non-combat. Uh, knowing how to build that dice pool and knowing uh, what the skills do. I, I wish I had a PDF that showed skill definitions. I'm not going to show it on camera because it's just it doesn't come out very well. I don't like how it looks uh, with my current lighting situation. Uh, but if you're playing the game, you have access to the book and you'll know what skills do what anyway. So yeah, you just form your dice pool, make your roll, and then you have to interpret it. Did you succeed? Did you fail? Did you get any threats or despairs? Did you get any triumphs or, dis or despairs? Um advantages or threats or triumphs or despairs rather and you tell your story around that and i think that's that's the real strength to this game you know i was a big fan of, of the saga edition and before that i was a huge fan of the d6 system by west end games that was you know out in the 90s um but this has been my favorite to play it might not necessarily be my favorite Mechanically, there might have been some things I enjoyed about the other systems a little more. But when I get in and I'm playing this game, this is my absolute favorite version of the game because of this dice mechanic. It, it, it really helps you tell a story beyond success or failure. It really makes you think, all right, well, I got two advantages. Why did I get two advantages? Or I got two threat. What happened? You know, I succeeded, but... Uh, there's something wrong, you know, and it, it, it's helped us, I think my group, really begin to paint pictures. Uh, it's forced us to think, you know, nudged us it's without being heavy-handed to think about what's going on. And the cheat sheets like this really help out with that, because when you're stuck, you just look at it and say, oh, okay, you know, if, if we're making a mechanics check, I succeed but have a threat. Uh, item malfunctions in the near future. So it was a patchwork fix. You know, it didn't really um, mix. Or, or I, six, you know, I fail, but I gain an advantage. Um, you could use it. I, I would say some, if you fail, but gain an advantage, uh, reduce the time to fix it in the future by 10 to 20%. You know, you didn't fail, fix it this time, but you're close. And, uh, yeah, nope, that's that's about it for skills. Uh, I'm going to do a talents video, maybe tonight. If not tonight, probably tomorrow. Um, we're going to go over some of the different talents and, and talk about gaining them and, and how talent trees work. Uh, but as far as skills go, I mean, it's really very simple. It's a simple mechanic that has an almost unlimited sense of usefulness with the advantage, threat, despair, um, and triumph symbols. So uh, I hope somebody found this useful. I hope this maybe helped clear up some some confusion some people might have. If you found something useful, please absolutely feel free to give me a like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know it helped you out. And uh, we'll keep the videos coming. Thank you.